Hey, this is Yukimi. And this is Eric. We are from Little Dragon, and you are watching Bobby, Bobby Me. Me. Uh, you were in Vilnius uh, yesterday, right? So, and today it's uh, it's Tallinn, Estonia. How do you how do you like the audience of the Baltics? Really nice. Actually, we were here maybe eight years ago. In we played a small jazz club. I don't remember, but uh, what the, what the name was. But me growing up in a, I was in a choir, so we were always talking about how good the Estonian choirs were. So <laughs> for us, well, for me at least, it's. Uh, it's a singing nation, so that gives me good hopes for this day. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, interesting that you mentioned that you were here eight, eight years ago because um, you uh, formed as a band in 1996, and um, if, if I'm not mistaken... We met in we met 1996, okay. yeah, we've been friends since then, but... We started uh, playing music and stuff. Yeah, but we probably started the band in um, uh, 2000. Five maybe yeah. yeah with a plan a band yeah. with a plan yeah. with a, a band record with plan. deal yeah. and stuff like that yeah, yeah. Because uh, your, f your first uh, uh, single was released in 2006, uh, yeah. so it's basically it's 10 years later. So was it kind of you were looking for your sound and then on, you know, on 2005 you were like, okay, we got this. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Yeah, we were experimenting, trying different, different, uh, cop to copy different sounds mm -hmm. and uh, write songs and, uh, you know, I guess not, maybe not consciously, but trying to figure what what we were doing, figure out what we were doing, and I think that um, uh, I don't think we realized we were really searching until we we felt like we wrote something that felt you know unique to us. So, yeah. In your own words, how would you describe the sound of Little Dragon? I mean, I, since we we all produce and write in the band, everyone, and uh, we're very like. Um, we have very different uh, sort of backgrounds mm -hmm. in music, so I think that's why we kind of have a eclectic sound within the band. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, there's influences from from reggae and and hip hop to you know synth music, electronic music. So I say a kind of dreamy mix of you know psychedelic uh mellow friction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mellow friction. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with the such different backgrounds and how is the writing process do you all just come together when you feel like this is time we have something to say or it's uh, or it's the other way around you kind of make a plan to make a record and then you come together or someone brings an idea or how does it usually work with you guys well we have a studio together so um we um very, it's comfortable yeah, it's very comfortable <laughs> so everyone has their own room and we kind of start off uh, individually yeah yeah, so uh, the guys will be making different beats and, and you know, I'll kind of work one on one mm -hmm. with each one of them and then we'll sort of uh, come together by the end of sort of complete, completing the song. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it's been through the years, but... I think we've been doing it for so long also that it's become a very big part of our everyday routine when we are home. It doesn't really make sense to do anything else but making music and mm -hmm. even though all all music doesn't lead to an album, or, yeah. but it's a, it's very, it's a good meditation for the soul to just make music and yes. pump up the volume and dance. I <laughs> suppose. <laughs> you do that in the studio? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's also a little bit different, rather than uh, bands who don't have this. They kind of they have to kind of uh, sort of schedule in or uh, kind of uh, feel like, oh right, now we feel like we have a, a material. You're yeah. just there. Yeah, 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 I mean there are different ways. I think it's kind of a modern way these days. Anyone can have a home studio, you know. So it doesn't take much more than a microphone and a computer, maybe a little synthesizer. So. Um, you know, it's, it's not like you have to have a, a, a studio that's, that's um, yeah, but people still do book studios and it costs tons of money and, <laughs> you know, it does something psychologically when you're in the studio and the clock is ticking and it's costing and you got to write something, you know, so in that, in that sort of a sense, we are very lucky to have a space where we feel free and we don't feel like, you know, we're, if we do, don't do anything, it doesn't matter, you know, if, so. 
I also had a question. Your first release was uh, was on on a double sided vinyl. Uh, what made you choose this uh, this sort of um, channel, if I can say? Because 2006, I think it was the time when the whole digital craziness was very up and going. Yeah. Well, two friends. Uh, one one friend uh, s specifically called uh, Christopher Berg, but um, and uh, another guy called Daniel had a little label called Off the Wall and they're friends of ours and they were releasing limited edition seven inches so they sort of were keen to release two two songs of ours and uh, and uh, yeah it was a little hand printed vinyl um, and uh, you know we were kind of excited about that having never released any music it felt very hands-on and very kind of fun so so um, yeah and Eric is a vinyl junkie so we were, we were excited about that so um, yeah, it was just sort of the first step, really, and, and I guess we, we got a little bit of uh, hype after th that release, which was very helpful. You know, we got a record deal and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, Did you expect that, uh, that, that kind of um, reaction to it? Uh, or you maybe were worried about uh, kind of how we will get this thing going with the first uh, vinyl? Or you were just, okay, we love this, we did this, let's see what happens. Well, I think we were more, that single was a bless for us because I don't think we would have got the confidence to really, to push for it ourselves. So I think at that time we were more, we were more uh, nervous and anxious and are they really going to like us or, you know, we were liking it, but you don't really know until somebody says from the outside that they like it. That's when you really feel like, okay, we're doing something good here. You know, um. you released an album uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, how would you describe uh, the creating process of that album uh, compared to the previous ones you did? How is it maybe different? Um, well, every every album release has been its own kind of evolution and part of the story, I guess, in a way. And and I think when it came to the last album, we we sort of came off of a, a, a Nabuma Rubber Band, which was um, sort of a a big uh, a big release with a new label and new labels and uh, you know we had sort of video budgets for the first time and we had a lot of people involved and I think we a little bit you know in a sense now looking back in retrospect we lost a little bit touch um, with with certain things that in the beginning we've been so hands-on you know uh, in every aspect of of the band you know from starting out selling our own merch after the shows to making our own remix uh, um, you know, mixtapes to um, doing everything online, you know, me uh, contacting designers to borrow clothes for life. So we did everything ourselves, came from that, and suddenly you have people helping you, and I think that um, it felt amazing, but then we, we kind of got a little bit lost in that. And I think that for the last album, we sort of came out of that and kind of realizing that, okay, we need to get in touch with sort of where we came from, you know, being more hands-on and doing things a little bit more uh, homemade and, and not being, you know, worrying about things being too perfect or living up to any kind of ideal, just sort of being a little bit more rough, yeah. So, uh, and generous with ourselves and not polishing things too much, so. Uh, it's interesting that you uh, mentioned uh, this uh, album being as a story because my next question was, if we look at all your albums as, uh, for example, books, who tell this one big story? Uh, what would you say is the story of uh, of Little Dragon in like this whole big one? Wow. Well, it's definitely a psychedelic, uh, trippy book. Um, <laughs> you know, it it's gone through many phases, and and uh, like a book, you know, it has its its peaks and its sort of uh, slow parts, and it's. Uh, you know, exciting um, parts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, I've never thought of it that way, but it's a very interesting question. I mean, um, I think I think lyrically, you know, uh, I like to sort of tap into the, the surreal sort of world and, and things that mean something to me might mean something else to somebody else. So um, hopefully that's kind of, you know, the type of story. I don't know, do you want to add? No, no, I think uh, <laughs> it's a very good answer. <laughs> it's a good question. I have to like think about it more, yeah. but. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, uh, this book's name is Little Dragon. But why Little Dragon? 
uh, why not, uh, I don't know, big one right. or uh, yeah. like the majestic one or yeah. the uh, empowered or whatever? Because dragons, they're usually, you know, like these huge, so maybe Swedish. scary. You know, Swedish, we're very like, oh, we're not anything special. So yeah. we're, we're little, yeah. you know, but really in our heads, we like feel big, but yeah. <laughs> so modest, being modest. The modest dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think that's also been, maybe that's been one of the uh, theme of the story of the band. Has We always felt like we were always uh, really pushing really hard to get somewhere. We always felt like we were a bit of an underdog. We, of course, we achieved so much, but it, it, nothing has ever come easy for us. We never had a big hit or like just blew out and blew up or had sold out show after sold out show and things like that we always we were always a bit too weird maybe to yeah we had to work for it Absolutely. yeah what do you uh kind of get more excited about whether it's a recording process or uh performing live i think right now we're in a phase where we're getting more and more hungry for going back to the studio mm. Uh, but once you've been in the studio for a long time, then you want to be out. So I think it's a yeah. dual, it's, it's about having a balance. I think mm -hmm. sometimes we go too hard onto one thing, like only studio or only touring. I think we, we would probably benefit from mixing it up a little bit more. Yeah, there are downsides to both of the <laughs> <laughs> things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, shows, uh, you can have beautiful, amazing shows, and you can have shows sometimes that are difficult and and sometimes the traveling is really really rough you know mm. that's part of it that uh, people who are not sort of uh, in the music world don't know about you know um, and then of course in the studio it can be the most uh, inspiring fun thing mm. and then as anyone creative or anyone doing something you have moments of complete doubt and where you just yeah. sort of um, feel trapped into into you know uh, prestige or whatever so so yeah, it's kind of, they both have their ups and downs. When you feel like, uh, you mentioned in, in the studio, when you feel like maybe you're trapped or, or stuck or whatever, how do you get over these moments? I think that um, uh, you kind of learn, you, 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 you uh, notice uh, um, patterns like, uh, you know, uh, you notice that, okay, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm here again. You know, you don't take it so seriously. Yeah. I'm feeling shit about this song right now, and I've, I've felt that way before. And, uh, you know, I don't have to, you know, be identical to that feeling. It's just a feeling. It comes, and you just open the window, and it goes out. So it's like, uh, comes and goes, and, and um, I guess just not taking the feelings too seriously. Yeah, <laughs> recognizing that, oh, I'm just, you know, it happens. It's like being angry. You're going to get angry again sometime, you know. You can't beat yourself down about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there something you uh, do uh, as uh, maybe each of you or, or uh, as a group uh, to kind of get prepared uh, to go on stage? I think now lately we're becoming a bit lazy with like take three deep breaths together. I don't know if it's enough actually. Maybe we should, before we used Sometimes to do some super, uh, we did a very complicated high five routine, which was Sometimes better. Sometimes we take shots. Yeah, tequila. which is also that, that was a uh, one tour we were taking a drink tequila. Yeah, it varies, but um, sometimes like uh, strong caffeine drinks can work. Definitely, just having even if it's just a few seconds moment of recognizing each other. You know, whether mm -hmm. that's just like okay, you know, we're about to do this. Yeah, like connecting. Yeah, yeah. connecting. Yeah, because sometimes even when you travel, you don't really connect. You're not really there. So before a show, you want to kind of be like, you know, see each other, recognize yeah. each other. Uh, I have uh, one more question that we ask uh, all artists. It's a bit philosophical one. Um, if you could change one thing in the world or in the society, what would it be? No, is there really a need for a change? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Lazy answer. Everything's perfect. <laughs> there's so many things you could change. Like I feel like there's an endless list of things that you'd like to, well, that I think of. But But I mean... I think it'd be nice when people have like these um, political big EU meetings or top meetings uh, with like different, you know, leaders for all of them to like, for, you know, a good 
15, 20 minutes meditate together. Oh. And then they can talk their negotiations, whatever. Yeah, I agree. More <laughs> yoga. More yoga. More yoga. Yeah. <laughs> If Trump can start doing yoga. He needs to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. More yoga to the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.